Hello and welcome to another webinar at 9.Arts. I'm glad you're joining us today. This is Distinguishing Your Multifamily Property Through Art. I'm so glad you're joining us. Now, whether you're a developer or you're just curious about the intersection of art and multifamily environments, you're in the right place. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. And uh, right away, I want to I wanna, I wanna introduce myself. Uh, my name is Keith Hitchcock. I'm Digital Content Manager at 9.Arts. And more importantly, let me introduce our presenter, uh, our special guest for the day. This is Molly Casey, Chief Curator and Co-Founder of Nine Dot Arts. Hello, Molly. Hello, everyone. How are you, Keith? <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm so looking forward to uh, just hearing your presentation today. I've seen the slides, and I know there's just a lot of information that's going to be coming at me. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know I'm going to learn a lot, and that uh, others will as well. So just a couple of moments of housekeeping uh, uh, keeping after we're done with a, a couple more comments of intros, housekeeping. Um, you're going to hear a little bit more about us, that being 9.Arts. Um, you're going to get a little glimpse into boosting ROI with art. Um, and then we'll, we'll dive into the main um, part, the heart of the presentation, really, um, where Molly is going to be going through some case studies. You'll get to see some pretty art and uh, uh, learn a lot about the multifamily environments. Um, after that, we will have some Q&A, um, lots of questions prepared for uh, Molly to, to answer. And uh, then we'll call it a day. A, a day. With that, we are uh, we're already at the about us section so let's dive in molly tell us um starting uh starting out with the question who is nine dot arts well nine dot arts is a creative placemaking and art curation firm we are headquartered here in denver colorado but we also have a great office in seattle and hopefully going to be adding another office in the future um, we work across many industries, so everything from hospitality to corporate office, multifamily, municipalities, big public art, um, all across the, the different verticals. And uh, we have now worked on projects in 36 states and five countries, hoping to eventually get to that 50. Um, and then in addition to all of that, we have this wonderful artist database that we are working on actually adding resources to for artists right now. And that's called .folio. .folioart.com is the site. And it's a free tool for artists to sign up and have their portfolio uh, be viewed by our curatorial team internally when we're searching for artists for projects. It's not our only resource that we use for research, but it's a really handy one. And it allows artists to organize their portfolios completely free of charge. So um, a nice little gift to the artist community as well. All right, now we know about 9.Arts, but what is an actual art curator? What do we do? I know that's a question I've been getting ever since I signed up to be one. So I am basically a partner in placemaking. I work collaboratively with public and private partners from those verticals I mentioned earlier. Everyone from developers to designers, city officials, architects, um, to really dive in and understand their brand and most importantly, the story that they're trying to tell. And then I go out and find the artwork that communicates that visually. So creating narrative and um, places that people want to be. So moving on, what do we do? How do we do it? We've got this four simple step process that is tried and true and we use it across all industries and we use it for all verticals. So we start off with vision and roadmap and that's where we take a deep dive with the team, um, our client team to figure out exactly what it is that they're trying to, to say and do with their project. Um, from there, once we do that uncovering, we will start to go into our research and curation stage. And that's where we go out and we are hitting the pavement, finding the local artists, looking for the right fits to help bring that story to life. That's one of the times that we start to use .folio when we go in there and um, start searching, especially by locale, because if it's a place that we haven't necessarily worked in before, it's a great way to start to get to know that artist community. 
once we put together that initial uh, collection and artwork package. Um, we do a little bit of finessing back and forth with the client to get exactly what they are looking for. Um, and then our art acquisition team takes over all of those logistics of making sure that art gets where it needs to be on time, is framed, is stored, um, and then finally installed. So stage four is the big day or week, depending on how big the project is. And that's when our team is going to come and install all of the artwork um, as well as engagement materials. So one thing that we always make sure to include is artist labels and that way artists are able to get acknowledgement for their work and um, your staff won't be busy trying to answer the question all the time of who made that. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be able to figure that out on their own. Um, so essentially we do comprehensive project management um, to make sure that clients can focus on other things and they know that their artwork is being taken care of and fully soup to nuts uh, realized. So one other thing that I wanted to mention in today's uh, presentation is that we have sprinkled in throughout this presentation some findings from our state of the art report. So this is an annual report that we do and we survey business leaders from across all these different industries um, about the impact and power of art. And so the report then um, really just brings back all of that data in a nice succinct way. And it's all about how, how art impacts projects in the built environment. Really great report. You can um, download it from our website as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Distinguishing your multifamily property through art. Because we know there are some challenges right now. So we'll go ahead and first talk about what are the challenges that we're seeing in multifamily for developers? And then how can art help to be part of the solution here? So in my 15 years of experience doing this, I have never seen costs for construction jump this fast and this high um, ever. I mean, it's a massive, massive jump. And it's really, you know, it's hurting all of our developers' ability to be able to get what they want out of a project um, because the construction just is demanding so much of that. So we know that that can lead to smaller art budgets. Don't get rid of your art budget though. That would be a big mistake, mostly because we know that this is something that can help uh, distinguish you. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we know that now in this new digital nomad age that there are changing needs of the consumers for multifamily. So people want this new hybrid work reality, right? So you have to be able to build desks into your spaces and people are going to spend more time in the apartment buildings. Um, and also we know that housing is very difficult to, um, to reach right now for a lot of first time home buyers. So obviously a lot of folks are flocking to apartments as a result of that. Um, we also want to talk a little bit here about the new developments, uh, integrating with the local community, because it can be a little bit jarring. And sometimes the community is upset that like a really large apartment building is going to be going in to their community where there wasn't one before. And so artwork, we can talk about how artwork is going to help sort of like lessen that blow and can actually get the community on your side, um, and avoid gentrification. Um, and then finally, the multifamily industry, holy cow, amenity wars. I have never seen so many amazing amenities. <laughs> it makes me want to live in one of these apartment buildings. But we know that it's difficult to compete because as soon as you start building out your project, sometimes that next uh, the next project comes along and they've got an amenity you didn't think about. So we'll talk about how to help um, stand out amongst the crowd as well. And um, I'm going to show you how art can help to overcome these challenges. So let's talk about some of these takeaways you're going to have today, these solutions. So we know that art connects residents to your brand, your property, and to one another. So we know that art sparks conversation and dialogue between people. Um, and also it helps to tell the story that you're trying to tell. It brings that brand to life in a really wonderful, um, authentic way. Um, art is also an authentic amenity. So original artwork is going to distinguish you from your competition, uh, who probably are going to be using the same posters as other buildings. And artwork can artwork can actually help to distinguish you in that way. 
And then art also builds community. So going back to the local community, how can we have artwork help to bridge that gap between you coming in as a new developer and having um, the community buy into that? Well, if you're working with the local community and purchasing artwork from those folks, that automatically is going to start to generate a good positive buzz and for the project itself. Um, and you can also use that as a way to activate your space after it's done. You can invite those artists in for an artist lecture or maybe a tour. Uh, so a way to also then engage the community of the building. Um, and then finally, and most exciting, what everyone always wants to talk about is that art can actually boost your project's ROI. So I will go into a little more detail on that on our next slide. So we know that artwork already boosts ROI just period through and through. We've seen it in all different verticals, but specifically in multifamily this, your artwork creates one of a kind art experiences. That's immediately going to lead to quicker lease ups. People are going to walk in and say, wow, this place is cool. I want to live here. If you ever, you felt it before, if you've ever walked into a space and you're excited about being in there. And a lot of times artwork is the thing that is the icing on the cake that gives you that feeling that is going to help people want to, uh, sign up and, and make it their home. Um, secondly, the high value look and feel that you can get with artwork, it demands higher rates and longer lease times. So again, people want to live there. You can charge a little more. They understand that this is a cool place and that you got to spend a little more to be in the cool place. Um, going to that cool place, this it's completely unique. It's placemaking, right? You are creating a space that no one else has and um, that can earn you media as a result of that. Uh, we've seen that in several projects. And then lastly, we really wanna maximize the art budget to boost that ROI. So how do we make sure that we're using the art budget in a really effective way and that we're getting the most bang for the buck um, and making really big high impact moments? Um, and part of that is creating these cost efficiencies. So being strategic with key locations, which we'll see in some of these case studies that I'm going to show you, um, because we know there is great opportunity to really wow people from the moment they walk in, or maybe even before they walk in. Um, and then also making sure that we're focusing on the most public facing areas first, including that tour path that you're going to take folks on. Uh, that should just wow them at every corner that they turn, um, because that's going to be this, that's going to be their first impression. Um, and then lastly, how to approach uh, corridors. This is a really um, tricky one because corridors can suck up a lot of money really fast. And so we have some really good ways of approaching corridors in a way that's more efficient and allows us to use more of the budget in the primary locations that are going to be the most beneficial to the project. All right, so now we're going to go through some case studies, some pretty pictures, it's my favorite part. We're going to go through three different case studies today. We're going to look at the Citizen Apartments, which just opened here in Denver. We'll look at Modena Reserve, which is a senior luxury senior living in Maryland. And then finally, Connect in Nashville, Tennessee. So we'll kick it off here with Citizen Apartments. This is one of my favorite recent projects. And this building is an entire half a city block. It is 18 floors, very long corridors. Um, and so we really had to maximize this budget. Um, basically this project is uh, came up in the art museum district here called the Golden Triangle in Denver. It used to be a little grittier, um, you know, a lot of smaller houses and small businesses, but now it's really becoming a hotbed for where folks want to live because it's so central and you're in the museum district. It's super fun. There's arts all around you. Um, and we also wanted to make sure as uh, the client wanted to make sure that they were celebrating the location of Colorado while not being a Colorado lodge, so to speak. So let's celebrate Colorado through using local artists as opposed to having pictures of uh, aspen trees. So um, what I'm going to go ahead and dive into with you guys are three specific examples from the collection that really help to highlight art as an amenity. 
So starting off with your wow moment, this is a great example of where you spend your bigger bucks. This is the entryway into the space from the street. This is one of the first things people are going to experience when they walk in. And the client said, we want something just wow and different and unique, and it's going to hang. We've got these huge ceilings. So we worked with a local artist. Almost every single artist in this collection is local to Colorado. Um, and this this piece here really just set the, sets the tone for the rest of the collection. You walk in, you're wowed. You're like, this is a cool place. This is so interesting. I want to know more. I want to see more. Um, so this is a really great example of how you, you set the tone for the rest of the collection and the rest of the building. Now, one thing that you cannot do is this. If you bring an art curator on six months before the project opens, this project we started three years early, and that was because we needed to do construction coordination, working with the general contractor and the architect, um, and just figuring out where our hanging points were going to be in the ceiling and getting those built in there before, of course, the ceiling was poured and just really focusing in on location of these things and making sure that the site was going to be ready and prepared to receive an amazing piece of artwork that was going to weigh a lot. Um, so getting started early is key to any of these wow moments. Um, the other thing that we had to think about too is installation. We didn't want to install this piece uh, after the floor tiles had been placed, just in fear of cracking anything. So it's all about that timing, those logistics, and that really, really tight coordination with the team. So the next piece here that really just helps to um, bring this site to life and show the dedication that the client and developer has to the neighborhood. Uh, this is a mural that was done on the parking garage. You can see the before on the left-hand side here. And this wasn't an area that we had initially thought of as an art location, but as the project started to build out, we went and took a walk around and just noticed that there was this parking garage was just an eyesore from as far away as like three blocks. You could see it because it's so tall compared to the other buildings around there. And so we hated that this beautiful building that the architect has put so much time and thought into materials and colors and cadence of windows. Um, we hated that was just going to get lost because humans don't really look up above that sixth floor when you're this, this close or even pulled back. I mean, you're going to see this first. And so working with a local artist again um, and the architect, we used the architecture as a jumping off point and as an inspiration for the mural itself so that it pulled the same visual language of the architecture and the building down to the ground level. Um, it makes it so much more beautiful for the community when they're walking around there. Um, it's also a, you know, like the local artist aspect. You know, he, he was able to come and meet people. He worked on it for over a week. Um, so just a really great piece that shows the dedication of the developer, not only to the community, but also to the local art scene um, and supporting local artists. Mm -hmm. And moving on, this is a really fun piece. So this was actually um, art that is disguising an amenity. So you can probably tell from this picture with the door open, there is actually a door hidden in this installation. And it is the door to the speakeasy. And we even came up with a little box to hide the uh, fob reader. So really integrating that, uh, the needs of the, the amenity uh, with the artwork so that it became one big full piece. Um, but they really wanted it to be a cool, unique installation that made the speakeasy more difficult to find. Um, so just a really fun solution to use artwork to help amplify the amenity in the space. So as you can see through the citizen apartments, art can really be that authentic amenity that helps distinguish you and sets you apart from other multifamily developments. All right, let's jump into Modena Reserve. This is in Kensington, Maryland, right outside of D.C., it's luxury senior living at its finest, which is making a huge, huge, well, just making huge waves right now in senior living um, as folks are getting older and um, are looking for places to be. They do not want to be in a traditional nursing home. So everyone is upping the game big time in senior living. Um, so 
the specific project really wanted to focus again on local and regional artists because a lot of these folks either are collectors or have been collectors, um, but also they they know the local art scene. And we wanted to bring in the history of DC um, where a lot of these residents have worked for most of their careers. Um, and part of that was to be able to hearken on old memories, but also spark conversations about those moments in, in history in DC and where they were at the time um, in their careers between not just the residents themselves, but also the, the residents and staff. And of course, their visitors, grandchildren, um, children, friends, all of that that'll be coming through the space. So let's take a look then at one of the really cool, impressive lobby pieces. Again, this is a wow piece. Uh, this piece was specifically commissioned for this space. Um, originally, there was going to be a fireplace here. It just wasn't going to work out with all of the requirements and structures and everything. And um, it became then essentially a pedestal for an art piece. And so working with um, a local artist to create a design that really engaged this entire space um, and also gave a wow moment, which is of course way cooler than a fireplace, in my opinion. Um, but you can see it creates movement in the space. It feels very intentional, even though the space wasn't uh, actually made for the piece, the piece was made for the space. Um, but it really, the artist just really did a great job in taking that space and owning it. Um, and it really, it's become a conversation starter too. I mean, it's got, uh, it's a very contemporary glass piece, um, but it's in this more traditional setting. And so you kind of can, uh, you can think of this as a way to like bridge the generation gaps where you get some folks who appreciate contemporary art, some who like things more traditional. Um, and this is uh, by Denise Bohart Brown. Um, just in case anyone's wondering and needs to buy one for themselves because you've fallen in love with it. All right. A couple other things that I wanted to touch on for Modena Reserve because it is um, specifically senior living. There are certain considerations we take um, very seriously for senior living. Um, and you can see that coming through in all of the work that we did here. So wayfinding is, of course, a really important tool for anywhere, but senior living, it becomes more important. So like at every elevator landing, for instance, we have a different piece of artwork so that nobody gets confused on which floor is theirs when they get off. Um, this is something that we recommend anywhere you can do it, but we know that sometimes budget doesn't necessarily allow it, but it's super important here so that everyone can figure out where they are. Um, and we want to make sure in the corridors too, that there's a different piece of artwork everywhere on every different floor. And when you change up the imagery and the number of pieces on every floor, as folks are using those corridors to move through, sometimes even if it's like cold weather outside, folks will actually use that in a way to get exercise. You can walk around these long corridors. Well, we wanna make that interesting and engaging for the, the uh, residents as well. And so this is using different artwork pieces is a great way to keep people moving on to the next piece, not getting bored um, and knowing where they are on their walk. Like, okay, I'm halfway there, I'm, I'm at the apple. Um, and then the multi-generational appeal, which I mentioned earlier. So we really had a combination of more contemporary art, but also with some more historic like maps and black and white photography. So again, sort of talking across multiple generations. And then lastly is really creating a sense of home and comfort, which of course any, any space should have if it's multifamily, but these people, they're they're living and using this space day to day. They're not necessarily like leaving and going out and coming back on a daily basis the way you, you might in a non-senior living situation. And so familiarity is really important. Um, we were able to use things such as old playbills from the theater around DC, um, old black and white photography of famous moments in history over the last 70 to 80 years. So really just helping to bring that era of the folks who will be living here into the space while still complementing it with new contemporary work. So here you can really see in Modena Reserve that uh, we were leveraging art to build the community, the internal community, as well as the, the external artist community with this new property. So lastly, we're going to go into Connect, which is a really fun project, kind of the opposite of senior living, definitely for 
a younger crowd living in Nashville. It's a lot of people are moving to Nashville right now and they want cool, hip, uh, vibrant places to live. And this delivers. So the idea here was to really connect the brand. And I mean, connect like C-O-N-N-E-C-T to connect the brand um, and make sure that there, that it was really a part of the locale. So all the artists, again, local artists, they all, this was during COVID too, impressive. These artists were in here uh, during COVID and each one would take a different week and come in and paint their work or install their work um, since we really couldn't have multiple people at a time on a site and um, it all got done, done beautifully. Um, so this project is a multifamily residential property, um, just as the other ones we've looked at, it's a little smaller than um, the citizen project we looked at. And the collection here spans from the first floor lobby up to the seventh floor clubhouse. So really engaging multiple different floors as you um, move through the space. And it's got everything from murals, which you're seeing a lot of here, to light installation art, paintings, and we did some styling objects as well, which you can see um, in this seating area down on the uh, lower right-hand side. Um, but really the art collection here was to complement the history and the character of Nashville as Music City. So you can see in this middle mural here, we'll talk about that in a second, um, just that really nice connection that they were able to make. Um, but really wanted to make sure that the folks who were living here felt like they were part of Nashville and like their home had the same vibe. So two notable pieces. Uh, first of all, we've got a two-story mural in the lobby. This was a huge piece the artist worked on for quite a long time just to be able to get all of this detail in there on such a large wall. But you can see in this image here that the words and images speak to Nashville. Classic sort of like Music City, right? We know that. But other parts of Nashville that maybe if you were new to Nashville, you wouldn't necessarily know all the names of the neighborhoods or know all the references in here. So it invites the residents to spend more time with the artwork and then get to know their community a little bit better too. Um, and that, again, highlights the community. But the other thing is this, these artists were all local. So this artist knew everything about Nashville and was able to bring that feeling in through his work. And then this is probably one of my all-time favorite pieces, not just in multifamily, but all together. It's just incredible. These are all sequins. Every little tiny circle you see glimmering here is a sequin. And this is local artist Kong Wei Ping. And this piece, again, spans two stories. You can see how it uh, divide, It gets divided here by the walkway. And it's a nod to the costumes and glitz of show business, um, especially in Nashville, where I think there are a lot of diamonds. Uh, last time I was down on Broadway, I couldn't believe the glitz and the glam in all of the stores. So uh, this, this project really helps to sum up how art can tell the story of your brand and just knock it out of the park and really get that brand feeling into the space. Pill pillows can't do that. All right, well, let's get into a little recap here. So what we talked about today, art is an authentic amenity, right? This is the thing that will distinguish you and it is different from every, every other project. It will help to really create a special space. Um, art helps build community with the internal community of your, of, of your property, as well as the external art community. Um, and art tells the story of brand and culture. Connect was such a great example of that. Um, and then lastly, and most importantly, art does help to boost your property's ROI. Um, it's just such an important thing to think about when you are having to make budget cuts to not go with posters that will not help your property's ROI. That will most likely just hurt it. So keep that art budget as intact as you can and we will help you maximize it. So with that, I think we're gonna jump in to our Q&A. Okay, that was so wonderful, Molly. I feel like I always learn when, uh, when, I, when you present or I just have a conversation with you and uh, this is no exception. So thank you for that. 
And luckily, we have a, uh, a bunch of questions that have been pre-submitted for you. Um, and so I'm just going to dive in and uh, start asking you this, these questions. And uh, we'll get to as many of these as we can in the time we have. Awesome. You ready? I'm ready. H hit me up. Okay. First question is, does 9.arts only do multifamily projects? And what areas do you work geographically? All right, great questions. Well, definitely no to the first one. We love multifamily, but our process works across all verticals. We work in hospitality, we work in healthcare, we work hand in hand, in hand with cities and municipalities, um, our office buildings, really anywhere um, and anywhere that needs artwork, we can help. Just don't ask us to do your house. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to residential, or excuse me, when it comes to um, uh, the locations, as I mentioned earlier, we work across, we've worked th across 36 states so far, getting closer and closer to 50. Um, and we've worked internationally as well, but we really are not tied by any boundaries at all. We can work anywhere in the world, anywhere geographically. It's, it's, no different um, from where we're actually located. And I think COVID just helped to prove that even more. We've Most of our projects were not in our uh, office um, cities when we were during that time. Awesome. That was question number two, uh, or on to question number two, which is, how long does the curation process take? That's a great question because every project has a different timeline. Um, but Going back, we've got that four stage process. And typically we like to have at least like two months at a minimum, but that's like a rush project. And that's not what we recommend. That's sort of like a last minute, oops, we forgot to do this. <laughs> um, but really the best is to get us started at about 60% um, schematic design. And that way we can help like with the citizen apartments, get everything fully integrated so that we're not having to tear up concrete and get through ceilings to to make the space um, accept the art so early coordination and planning is key and that makes our process take longer but it doesn't actually add uh, extra work to the client side of things um, it really just helps to make a better project at the end of the day and give a lot more um, a lot more options to our clients for artists to work with because artists do fill up with commissions sometimes a year out. And so we just wouldn't be able to work with that artist if we don't have that longer lead time. I imagine there's some cost savings as well for you know, if the earlier you start. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It doesn't, and it doesn't cost more to get us started early either, but then you're not having to go back with costly change orders for construction. Um, and you can also lock in pricing early on so that you've got us locked in. And if something changes, like we've, we've got our budget already established. Great. Okay. Question number three, um, how much should we budget for art? Well, it depends. I always like to say, though, the cities always require 1% of the construction budget. Now, if you can do that, amazing. We know that's not realistic for every developer. That's like a, a city requirement. Um, but with over a decade of experience developing budgets specifically for all of our different clients, we can help to allocate the budget in the most impactful way. As I mentioned earlier, maximizing that budget and making sure that we're getting those wow moments taken care of because we need to dedicate funds. We know this to high impact, high traffic areas first. And so we will help to manage that budget and advise you on how to spend it. Um, we need to be able to create those initial wow moments for visitors and really leave a great impression on any future tenants, especially in the leasing tour, as I mentioned earlier as well. Um, but we can help build custom budgets. So if you can't do 1%, try for a half a percent. If you can't do a half percent, we will definitely make sure to build you a budget that will cover everything you need. Great. You were talking about local artists earlier, and this question, next question uh, connects with that. Uh, which is how does nine dot arts understand the local community if you're not local that question comes up a lot so i'm really glad that you asked it um the first the first answer to that is we immerse ourselves in the local community and the way that we do that is through our research 
and getting to know artists. So one of the first things that we'll do is go to Dotfolio. It's a great tool. We already have artists that know who we are and have signed up to have their portfolio in there. We start reaching out and talking to them and saying, who else should we talk to? We have this project going on. Would you mind telling your other artist friends? And suddenly we start to spread out like wildfire among the artist community and people start to hear about us and we hear about them and we get connected. So artists will reach out to us. Once they hear about us, we'll, we'll do our research and reach out directly to them. Um, but we look through tons of different tools, like use different tools, like artist co-op galleries, um, different arts organizations, uh, art fairs, different events going on around town. Um, one of my favorites are uh, MFA shows to find the emerging talent that's coming out. So we're we're not limited to working with any artists specifically. Um, what we want to do is make sure that we're working with local artists so that we can keep that project money in the creative community and help to build um, excitement around this new project. Um, artists always are in the place where people are, are making the places that are cool. And so we know that working with local artists is going to automatically help this project get some legs as soon as it opens up. Now, you, you've mentioned Dotfolio a couple times, and, and just in case there is an artist watching right now, um, can you just say a couple more things about how they might, it, what Dotfolio is again, and how they yeah. might engage with that? Absolutely. So Dotfolio, uh, you can find it at dotfolioart.com. And that is a resource for artists and for Nine Dot Arts. And it is essentially a an online free um platform for artists to put their portfolio on. So it's, and it's okay if the artwork is sold or if it's in a gallery, it's a way for you to manage your own portfolio and know where things are and how much things cost. Um, and, but it's also a way for us to be able to search, find you, connect you with the clients that we're working with, um, and also be able to um, help provide re free resources for artists. So we've got a blog page on there as well, where we are regularly um, contributing uh, information and free resources. And we're going to be doing, a nut we just did three events this year. So we're going to try and up that next year where we're going to be able to invite our artist community through Dotfolio to join in these and participate. Um, and we're also starting a call for entry on there for nine dot um, projects specifically. So it's a great way to find other opportunities to get your work out there. Awesome. Next question. Uh, what's, what's a trend you're seeing in multifamily development? It's the amenities, the amenities war, who has the best amenities? <laughs> um, and that's not different from hospitality either, but I mean, really when it comes to multifamily, it's, Pools, rooftop decks, climbing walls, fitness, yoga, bocce ball, um, the speakeasies. I mean, you name it, people have it. Um, but one of the things that we know is that anyone can have those. You can put those in your plan and build it. But how is that going to make you different from the other person down the block doing those same amenities? So we know that the most authentic amenities are those that connect with the community and make a place more meaningful. And that's where artwork plays a role. Very cool. I, I live in a house, but you make me want to consider moving to someplace with a climbing wall and a speakeasy. That would be so Trust cool. Trust me, I've seen them and I'm like, oh, and then when we do the artwork, I'm like, oh, I really like this place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. We have we'll, we'll, like a few more questions here I think we have time for. Um, next one is, in addition to curating, do you install the art too? Absolutely. That is a step four in our four-step process. We not only install it, but we use professional art handlers to do the installation. We use security hardware so nobody can walk away with the artwork because they decided it would look nice over their new sofa. Um, so yeah, we, we make sure that our project management is soup to nuts uh, from the very beginning of the project and the visioning all the way through to the end of the installation where, you know, we're providing those um, engagement materials such as artist labels to make sure that people can like, they can find the artist and the artist gets credit for that work. And um, it, it's, yeah, full full picture capabilities and uh, services. So our team of specialists delivers quality, scope, and scale. Excellent. Okay, next question. 
um, how much does something like the excavator arm art piece cost? Well, I don't know if the um, client wants me to give you an exact number. I have, you know, it's one of those things and maybe private information, but I can tell you, you don't need blue chip artists to make an amazing collection. That was a local artist here in Denver. He's since moved to New York City for a great opportunity. Um, but I can tell you that it was less than uh, less than a hundred thousand dollars. So um, it it's not something where you have to break the bank by any means. Um, artwork can cost a lot less when when we join the process early, so we can integrate those things. But also so that we can bring emerging talent who's not going to be as expensive as you know shopping maybe with uh, a gallery that has really well known artists. So we can bring in that new fresh talent and still get you original artwork. Okay, I'm going to stop grilling you in a moment, Molly. We have just one question, which I, I think is is probably in, even an easier question. But anyway, we'll see. Who's an emerging artist you're especially loving right now? Oh, this is always a really hard question because it's there's so many, and it all depends on what project I'm working at, on who's top of mind. But I just worked with this incredible artist who did a mural in um, the the new uh, joinery hotel in Pittsburgh. It used to be the district hotel, but they uh, rebranded and, and refreshed. And it's Deanna Mance. And she also does watercolor or not watercolor, excuse me, um, colored pencil. And she's just, she's incredible. Her art is so compelling and has so much depth, but it's also colorful and just visually uh just grabs you and you, you just want to look at all of it for hours. So I really, really am excited about her work right now. Deanna Mance. Okay. I haven't seen her work yet, but I'm excited to check it out. So thanks for the tip and thanks for answering all those questions. No problem. As we start to bring it to a close, I want to thank you for joining us on the webinar today. And Molly, thank you so much for your presentation today. It was, again, it was just so great. I learned a lot. Oh, good. Well, thanks for thanks for having me do this. I love talking about multifamily. Oh, well, we'll definitely have you come back and maybe even talk about it in another industry. We'll see. But um, we're always available to continue the conversation at Let's Talk at 9.arts.com. Uh, we're on social media and having some good conversations over on LinkedIn and Instagram at 9.arts, all spelled out, 9.arts. And that's it. As the webinar closes, you'll see a, a survey pop onto your screen and uh, feel free to take a moment just to engage with that and tell us how we did and other uh, topics that you might like to hear about. With that, hope to see you again on another webinar and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.